Well, hello, Gaston County. Welcome to episode number 112. At least I think it's episode number 112 of Gaston Great, a, a podcast highlighting some of the great things happening in and around Gaston County. I'm your host, Stephen Long. We're coming to you once again from the international headquarters of GSM Services, where we simply believe in discussing more of the reasons why Gaston's great. So, this is a special episode today as we are recording this on Wednesday, December 20th. So we're going to call this our Christmas 2023 extravaganza. Is that good, Naomi? Yeah, special extravaganza. Okay, so <laughs> that's what we're that's what we're going with. So much to Naomi's chagrin, she has actually no idea what I have planned. So, but this is a special Christmas episode, and hopefully, sure, hopefully by the 20th you're already in the Christmas spirit. But if you're not, maybe this episode will help you get into the Christmas spirit. So we're going to get right to it. And I told Naomi like two minutes ago that I was going to ask her a couple questions. And sorry. That's Naomi. how it goes. That's how it goes. That's right. That's, <laughs> that's actually pretty typical of how we roll here with yeah. everything at GSM. So first up, do you have any Christmas memories that are worth sharing? Or anything that stands out when you maybe you were a kid? or eh, That had to be when you were a kid. Yeah. Um. I think the biggest thing, of course, I grew up in church my whole life. We know that by now, right? <laughs> and so we always did a, a a Christmas production like at my church. Okay. So I just always remember being in those. Um, and then it wasn't until, of course, I got older and the, you know, idea of a Christmas production shifted some and it was more of, you know, doing plays that geared towards salvation right for the christmas the the christmas season and so um whenever i got older it meant more to me to be in those because afterwards i'd see so many people give their hearts to christ and so that that to me is a special christmas you know memory just just knowing i helped It, it was a christmas production um, but there were many people that gave their hearts to Christ, you know, throughout the years of doing them and, um, you know, the different churches I've been a part of. So just stuff like that. As far as like a, a childhood, I mean, I really don't remember. Okay. <laughs> um, I think there was like one Christmas. I remember waking up in the middle of the night, no presents, heartbroken, then got back up. And they just were in a different spot. And so I didn't know that. <laughs> and so I was so over, like, that's the only one okay. I can remember. So, though. <laughs> so Santa came in between right, right. the time Probably. that you woke up the first time. And okay, so yeah, yeah. He, there's not a set time that he comes, right? You exactly. know that, right? Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> so yeah, mine is um, maybe not as the real meaning of Christmas-like as yours is. <laughs> but I do think you remember getting a puppy at Christmas one year. And Do you I remember re- his name? Um, Blackie, actually. The German <laughs> Shepherd. Cute. German Shepherd puppy. And I remember waking up and that dog was yelping. <laughs> such a high-pitched yelp. And I'm little. I'm really little. And I thought we had trapped a reindeer in the house. That's a and cool And it could have been that maybe my dad told us that's what it was. He just but didn't want sure you to enough, know. Sure <laughs> yes. Then... My 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 dad gets I think one of his pistols out and says he's gonna if we got a reindeer trapped in the house, he's gonna take care of it. <laughs> so we're going down the steps and I I think we remember jumping on his shoulders, just screaming at him. Don't don't hurt don't. the reindeer. Of course it was a puppy and it was great. Hashtag drama. Yeah, yeah that was <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. So I mean that's something that just really stands out in my mind. I mean, there were so many others too right. between my family and my mom and dad's family. So anyway. Appreciate that. So this is another question I think we maybe asked last year for the Christmas episode or sometime. I don't remember how it came up. but I think it was on the McAdamville Women's uh, oh, okay. Race Club. Women's Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah that. And okay. it got brought up. Cause her, because of the uh, her husband. their um, race, right? And, yes. And, and, and yeah, her, um, Andy Westmoreland dressing up as um, Buddy the Elf, Buddy the Elf yep. yeah, which you love. So what is your – do you have – we just learned. I just learned before this that um, Naomi's husband's a little more into Christmas type movies, maybe yeah. that type of stuff. So do you have a favorite Christmas movie? The only one that I remember watching and genuinely enjoying, like I like 
watching it every few years is Holiday in Handcuffs. Yeah, I remember you saying that now. Yeah, like that's the only one I can remember or think of. And I wish I had thought about that before this episode because I would have not asked that question. <laughs> it's not a I bad re- movie. I, I regret. It's a, it's this a Hallmark movie. Again. It's a Hallmark family friendly. Um, mm-hmm. Do you know the older version of Sabrina the Witch, the the actress that plays her? No. Yeah. She's in it. Oh. And Mario Lopez. Yeah, I'm sure this is really. <laughs> uh. Well, mine is probably um, a Christmas story. But I will take credit for watching that and, and that becoming a thing in our family long before it became famous. Because it was movie was made in 1983. Now, the mid to late 80s, that was a movie that I had already was already aware of and, and really enjoyed that. And, and it's just one that um, we even have a Ralphie in his bunny suit, inflatable in our front yard. Man, that's perfect. Legit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my wife, um, Janet, got me got me that maybe last year or the year before. So, yeah, it's something special. It's, it's really great in the neighborhood. I cannot. <laughs> all right. So, I mentioned, so that's all I've got on the question. So, we're going to, this is going to be a relatively short episode compared to some. But I'm going to, I'm going to do two things. Um, two short, um, shows that are famous Christmas is one is to how the Grinch stole Christmas and one is another is a Charlie Brown Christmas and I got no advice on doing this but what I've decided to do I'm actually going to do some, a reading of how the Grinch stole Christmas and then read something also from Charlie Brown Christmas so if you're not in the Christmas spirit you're not a fan of the Grinch I'm sorry but this is a, a book that I, was given to me many many years ago long before and uh, we, I read it to our kids and then of course we watched the short and I'm talking about the original animated version not not the movies that have come out since. Frankly, I'm personally, I might get in trouble for this, but I'm not a big fan personally of the Jim Carrey version, live action version. The newer animated one's actually pretty good, but the actual live action one, I'm just not a big fan of. Yeah. So, and this is, and Naomi probably just went, well, nobody's going to listen to this episode. Everybody's yeah, going to cut much. this one off. So, <laughs> we're going to read, I shouldn't say we, I am going to read, um, and I have timed this, so it's not going to take like three hours. But here is How the Grinch Stole Christmas from Dr. Seuss. Are you ready, Naomi? Yes. I don't think I've ever heard. Have you ever seen? Surely you've seen How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the animated. I've seen the original. like Not the original. No, no. I've seen the Jim Carrey. That's it. Mm -hmm. And I've only seen it like once. I've also never heard this actually read. Okay. Well, here we go. Uh, but it's not going to quite be as good as uh, Boris Karloff's reading in the original show. Sorry. I was going to say, I don't know who that is anyway. All right, so, so here we go. <laughs> Every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be, perhaps, that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the Who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm-lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every Who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. It's practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew all the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then all the noise, all the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated. The noise, 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 noise. Then the Who's, young and old, would sit down to a feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They would feast on Who pudding, the rare Who roast beast, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they'd do something he liked least of all. Every Who done in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand, and the Who's would start singing. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas sing, 
the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I put up with it now, I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do, the Grinch laughed in his throat, and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and clucked, what a great Grinchy trick. With this coat in this hat, I look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer, the Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did, did that stop the old Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said. If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max, then he took some red thread, and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, get up, and the sleigh started down toward the homes where the Hoos lay a snooze in their town. All their windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air, all the Hoos were all dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, this is stop number one, the old Grinchy Claus hissed, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue. Where the little who stockings all hung in a row, these stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room, and he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn, and plums. And he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimbley. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the Who's Feast. He took the Who Pudding. He took the Roast Beast. He cleaned out that ice block as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove when he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter who'd got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick. He thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there and I'll bring it back here. And his field fooled the child, then he patted her head, and he got her a drink, and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. And the last thing he took was the log for their fire, and he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other who, who houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other who's mouses. It was quarter past dawn, all the who's still abed, all the who's still a snooze, when he packed up his sled. Packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. 3,000 feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo-poo to the Who's, he was grinchously humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the Who's down in Whoville will all cry boo-hoo. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad, why the sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. He stared down at Whoville, the Grinch popped his eyes, then he shook what he saw was a shocking surprise. Every Who done in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming, it came. 
Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say, that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light, and he brought back the toys and the food for the feast, and he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. Now, doesn't that make you want to... Doesn't that make you want to go watch How the Grinch Stole Christmas? Yeah, actually it does. It's like a 20 to 25 (laughs) minute animated. It's terrific. Oh, like the original one's only 20, 25 minutes? Yeah, it's an animated like 30 minute thing with commercials. So, come on. Is it on like Hulu or? You might be able to find it somewhere. (laughs) I don't know. That's all I have. I have the DVD. You remember DVD? You ever heard of DVDs? Yeah, I don't have anything to play it there. (laughs) Wow. All right. Well, there you go. That was the Grant Tell the Grant Stole Christmas. So another show I grew up on was Charlie Brown Christmas. And if you've never seen have you ever seen Charlie Brown Christmas? No. Wow, I don't even <laughs> Who do you hire, Stephen? What in the world? <laughs> so uh, if you, I, I'm hoping that there's nobody else out there who hasn't seen the Charlie Brown Christmas, but if you haven't, I would encourage you to go watch that one as well. It, it's your typical Charlie Brown, uh, Peanuts, well, where you know Charlie Brown does something bad <laughs> or something goes wrong, and he's trying to figure out how to fix it, and you know he's he's a loser. So I'm going to read a little bit from the very end of a Charlie Brown Christmas. So Charlie Brown has got a little tree. It's it's not a great tree. It's, it's so small and raggedy that we put one ornament on it and it falls over. So this is where it picks up. And they're actually on a stage, I believe, like a Christmas program or something. And uh, Charlie Brown speaking. I guess you were right, Linus. I shouldn't have picked this little tree, said Charlie Brown. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I don't really know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown, I can tell you what Christmas is all about, said Linus as he walked to the center stage and asked for lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sure afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, for behold I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And when he finished with that last line, Linus turns and addresses the crowd. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. So again, it's another great show if you haven't seen it and it's a little more maybe compared to the Grinch it's a little more about specifically what as a Christian what we celebrate and what we think the Christmas season is all about what I like about these two excerpts is they're relatively short the book is terrific from the Grinch from from Dr. Seuss it's more about the general feeling and what Christmas um Christmas seems to be everybody seems to be nice to each other temporarily we seem to I even mentioned that we had our if you wonder why I'm dressed like this, I dress like this every day, right, Naomi? This is true. We happen to have our have our our December company meeting this morning, and and I did briefly talk about it. Wouldn't it be nice if we could have this feeling that we have between Thanksgiving and New Year's, that we could keep that feeling um, all the time? In fact, that's kind of what a Christmas Carol is about that you haven't seen either. Uh, but I would encourage you to to check that out. It's a great story um, as well. So, again, for what it's worth, I appreciate you letting us, let me share that with you. I'm going to finish up with uh, a, a couple of books as well and two more quotes. And one, one I just read, but I'm going to mention it again. So we have a, a really good friend of mine here locally, and many people know him. Uh, he's a local uh, longtime orthodontist here in town, Dr. Jim Makinson. He actually has written two books about Christmas. 
One, the first one is called Christmas Abiding, Stories of Blessings Bestowed. And the second one is Christmas Renaissance, Stories of Grace, Belief, and Spirit. I've read both of them, and I did check this morning just to be sure. They, you can find them on Amazon and at the publishers, um, the publishing companies that publish things for, for Dr. Makinson. But, again, they're, they're really good, just short stories, um, kind of, again, you know, staying in line with that, that, that general theme of Christmas and what Christmas uh, is all about. So I, I would encourage you to check those out. And then second, my, my, I've got two quotes I want to share. Uh, the first one is from a great movie that uh, Naomi's never seen called It's a Wonderful Life. And this is from Clarence the Guardian Angel. And again, if you f- happen to follow me personally on any social media, I share a quote at the beginning of every week. And I share these two quotes, one the week, this one the week before Christmas and the next one the week of Christmas every year, just because I think it's just worth, worth sharing. And Clarence the Guardian Angel said, strange, isn't it? Each man's life touches so many other lives. He leaves an awful hole when he's not around, doesn't he? So for me, that quote is about the significance that we have and the impact we have on others. It would it really, that's such a great story. It's a wonderful life when, you know, the gen, uh, um, George Bailey gets to see what his life, what his town, his community, and those that he, uh, his family and friends, what what the world would be like if he had never been born. So that, that was a, it's a great gift that he was able to see that. And so he was able to see the positive impact that he had on others. And I think that's true for most of us. And the second is from the Grinch. And then I'm, again, I just read this quote, but I'm going to read it again. When he says, um, maybe Christmas, the Grinch thought doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. And that goes into what I've already said about the, the, the feeling and how things seem to be just a little better, people a little nicer, people a little kinder uh, in this time period between, you know, Thanksgiving and the new year. And it would be nice if we could hold on to that and just have that feeling more than just that one month uh, out of the year. So this is our Christmas special. Naomi, anything you would like to add before we close this? Just Merry Christmas. This episode out. <laughs> Have a good Christmas. <laughs> Absolutely. So, to our listeners out there, as always, we appreciate you taking time to listen to this episode. You know, please continue to spread the word if you can. Uh, we do have some more uh, guests coming up in in the first of the year. You, know, you can find us at the at our email. Excuse me. You can contact us here at the email address at podcast at guessingsgreat dot com. We're always looking for suggestions for future podcast topics and guests. You can find the podcast and subscribe at the website guessingsgreat dot com or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And please follow us on all our social media platforms. Thanks, Naomi, for listening to me ramble today. So we're going to take a week off between uh, Christmas and New Year, so we will not be releasing an episode next week. Uh, but we will be back on schedule for the first week of 2024. So our hope is everyone have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we will talk to you again in 2024.